Judges chapter number 17. I want to look at verse 6. The Bible said, In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the good singing. Lord, we were born to serve the Lord. And God, what a great privilege of our life to not only know you as Lord and Savior, but to be able to call you our friend. And Lord, we're glad you laid down your life for your friends. Now, Father, we are thankful for the Word of God. We're thankful, Lord, for the good prayer time we've had. We're thankful, Lord, for the good, uh, just being able to fellowship with thy people, be able to worship you together. Now, Father, as we come to you in prayer, we pray that, Lord, you'd stir our remembrance unto the good grace of God. And I pray that, Lord, you would help us from the Word of God tonight. You would enlighten us. You would strengthen us. You would uh, certainly revive us and set a fire within us that, Lord, we might truly worship you in spirit and in truth. Be with those churches that are meeting tonight. Be with those that are seeking revival. Send revival throughout this land. Help these thy people tonight, and we'll bless you for it. For it's in the holy name of Jesus we do pray. Amen and amen. There's three things I want to look at in this verse as a way of introduction. I want you to notice, first of all, what's absent. Look what it says in verse number 6. In those days there was no king in Israel. I want you to notice that the rest of the verse would have no meaning without how it starts. There's something that is absent. And what is absent to king? No more than that. What is, it is really referring to, what is absent, is there is no intercessor. Uh, there is nobody standing between God uh, and God's people. Uh, can I say, whenever uh, 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 there is nobody interceding, whenever there is nobody standing in the gap making up the hedge, uh, whenever there's nobody earnestly contending for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints, uh, when there is nobody uh, uh, standing for truth and righteousness, uh, uh, bad things are about to follow. Uh, can I say what's wrong in America today is the, pul the pulpits are no longer flaming with truth and righteousness. The pulpits are flaming with ideologies, uh, uh, with entertainment, uh, with thoughts that appease people's uh, minds and lifestyles rather than words that convict their hearts. We see what is absent. I want you to notice also the allness. Look what it says. In those days there was no king in Israel, but just the ones sitting on the right side of the church. Is that what it said? Oh, just the ones that felt like it. No. The Bible says, but every man, every man, the oldness, all were guilty of this. Can I say, left up to our own conceits, we will all go the wrong direction. When there is no interceding on behalf uh, 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 to God for what we need, uh, men will go astray. Mm -hmm. We see the absence. We see the allness. Now, notice who is the authority. It says, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. When there's the absence of an inter intercessor, the authority is no longer God, the authority becomes man himself. How many of you have loved ones? How many of you have co-workers? How many of you have neighbors? Uh, 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 when you try to tell them about the Lord, when you try to tell them about the Bible, uh, they will tell you what they believe. Can I help you with something? It don't matter what you believe. It don't matter what I believe. What matters is what thus saith the Lord the Word of God was given to be the absolute and final authority of our lives. Uh, and friend, you cannot help people who do not understand the importance of Scripture uh, and who will not do what God says. As long as they have their opinions of what religion ought to be, as long as they make up their minds as to how they're going to live, regardless of what the Bible says, you cannot help them. They're going to do what is right in their own eyes. 
and they become their own authority. Can I say if there's one thing that is wrong in this world today is man has become his own authority. And with God's help, I want to preach on that very little thought for a few minutes tonight. When man becomes the authority. When people no longer fear God and fear what God says and no longer fear that they're going to stand before God, you cannot help them. And when man becomes his own authority, he'll trample the things of God, he'll trample the people of God, he'll trample those things that are right, those things that are holy, those things that are necessary, and yes, those things that are essential for the very soul of man. I heard something very interesting today. I heard about a message. The very pastor who was the first one to be uh, harassed for his faith, the one down there in Mississippi when the, the mayor of the city sent uh, the police there to the uh, church house to stop uh, the, the, the drive-in service and stop the preacher from preaching uh, and told the preacher that they have no rights in this pandemic. The preacher just kept going. As a matter of fact, there was the first case, uh, court case to win uh, as far as the church and the First Amendment. That preacher has preached a message on this topic. The church is essential. Amen. And the message was to Christians. He says the reason that they can say the church is not essential is because churches have not been essential. When you don't have church on Sunday night, you don't have church on Wednesday night, you're telling the world church isn't essential. When you have the opportunity to assemble and you choose not to assemble, you're telling the world church is not essential. Anytime you call off for any appeasing of the flesh, you are telling the world church is not essential. Anytime you skip church to do something for this world, you are telling the world church is not essential. Amen. And all that is really saying is that man becomes the authority. Well, let me give you a few things on what happens when man becomes the authority. Can I say, first of all, he becomes iniquitous. Look at verse number 5. The Bible says, and the man Micah. Let me qualify this right now. This Micah that we're talking about, this Micah in chapter 17 of the book of Judges, is not the same Micah who's the prophet Micah, who's one of the minor prophets in the Old Testament. This is a different Micah. And if you study this out, uh, Micah's mother was wicked, and Micah goes on to become wicked. Hmm? But let me say something about this man, Micah. Uh, uh, he becomes iniquitous because man is the final authority in his own life. Uh, 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 every man's doing that which is right in his own eyes. Verse 5 starts out, and the man Micah. You have to understand what Micah means. Uh, the t name Micah means uh, who is like Jehovah. Now, uh, let me qualify that. Uh, uh, depending upon uh, uh, what vernacular of what part of the country, uh, uh, some of you understand this. Uh, if you're from Buffalo, New York, uh, you have to learn what y'all means. If you're from the north, you call it Louisville. If you're from the south, it's Louisville. You understand? There's a different vernacular. You've got to learn to speak hillbilly if you're going to live in the south. It's just the way it is. Uh, uh, you don't speak like they do up north. You ever hear some of them Yankees from up in Maine talk? I can't understand them. They think I've got an accent. I don't understand them. Uh, 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 in, in the greater Cincinnati area, if uh, uh, somebody says something to you and you're like me, you're getting a hold and you can't hear you, uh, uh, and you want to say come again or say again or huh, the popular term around here is please. But if you're not from here and they say something and you want them to repeat it and you say please, they say please what? What do you want? There's different binoculars for different region, regions. Do you understand me now? Are you with me? The word Micah means who is like Jehovah. But depending on the re region, it doesn't end there. 
there's an exclamation after that. Uh, uh, the exclamation point uh, is who is like Jehovah. Exclamation point. Uh, uh, the Micah of the uh, uh, minor prophets, uh, uh, his name is who is like Jehovah? Question mark. Now what does that mean? Well, who is like Jehovah? Question mark. Like the minor prophet Micah. That is like you and I saying, uh, who are we that the Lord would look upon us? Uh, who is like unto our God? There is none beside him. There is none like our God. Uh, and his name is saying, oh, what a God. There's nobody like him. But the Micah here of a different region, of a different translation, of a different name set with the exclamation point. Uh, who is like Jehovah? Saying, me, Micah, I'm like Jehovah. He becomes his own authority. Uh, he becomes iniquitous. Uh, uh, in other words, uh, uh, the Micah here, uh, uh, taken upon his own authority, uh, becomes self-willed, uh, becomes blasphemous. Uh, uh, it no longer matters what God says. Uh, doesn't matter what God thinks. Uh, doesn't matter what God says is profane. Uh, I will make my own way because I myself am the authority. We see when man becomes an authority, he becomes iniquitous, self-willed, to the point of blasphemy. Can I say there are things said in the media, there are things said in the schoolhouses, there are things said on the street corners, and there are very things said even in churches today that makes the Son of God cringe when people talk about our glorious God. Amen. They try to bring God down to our level. Amen. The very false Bibles out there, the first thing they attack is the deity of Christ. Why do you think the NIV some 170 times takes the blood of Jesus Christ out of it? Because if His blood didn't come from the Father, then He was nothing more than a man. And if He was nothing more than a man, we're still in our sins and we'll split hell wide open. He was the God-man. You see, when man becomes the authority, he becomes iniquitous. He makes himself equal with God. Can I say secondly, when man becomes the authority, there's idolatry. Look what it says in verse 5. And the man Micah had an house of little g gods. When man becomes the authority, he is given to idolatry. He himself had a house set aside of gods. Can I say man is going to worship something? Amen. He couldn't decide on who to worship. See, he had several gods to worship. He dedicated a room or a house for nothing more than to worship. Can I say, when man becomes the authority, he will become idolatrous. He will worship someone or something. In our day and age, some worship gold. Some worship silver. Some worship their jobs and their careers. Uh, some worship their vehicles. Uh, some worship their address. Uh, uh, some worship their friends. Uh, some worship movie stars. Uh, some worship sports stars. Uh, and God help them, some even worship politicians. Uh, I mean, they're worshiping something. Uh, there's some who worship the stars. Uh, there's some who worship the sun. Uh, there's some who worship preachers. Uh, there's some who worship, worship church houses. Uh, there's some who worship even God's people. Uh, but my dear friends, uh, when man becomes the authority, mark her down, he will not humble himself and worship Almighty God. Uh, when man becomes the authority, he, he's iniquitous, he's self-willed, and he's idolatrous. We find in the Scriptures when God breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul, the very conscience of man knows there's a God of glory. Uh, wicked man don't know who, who he is or how to get to him just like you and I didn't know how to get to him until he came to us revealed himself through the scriptures through the preaching of the word of God through somebody telling you about him through somebody giving you a track to somebody uh, uh, leading you to the all inspiring God but make no mistake 
Before you met Jesus, you was worshiping something. Everybody worships something. In ignorance, man worships something. That's why you can go to the darkest region where there's never been a Bible, but you'll find a totem pole or you'll find some uh, a deity that they worship. And what amazes me today is how mainstream pagan gods have become. You can't hardly go in any knick-knack shop and not find a tiki god. Hmm? Find them all over the place. Hmm? You'll find all kinds of a bliss. Do you know the Washington Monument was actually a monument made to a false god? Well, not when they dedicated Washington's monument. No, back in Babylon. They've been throughout the history of man, those obelisks. You'd be hard-pressed not to go to a graveyard and find them, just on a smaller scale. Hmm. And I dare say, when that monument was erected, it was because they worshipped George Washington. Hmm. And can I say, man worships something. You go to any knick-knack shop, you'll find all kinds of little, little demigods. Huh? Matter of fact, I dare say this is going to bust some of y'all's bubble and some of you are going to get mad and some of you are going to say I'm against it and some of you are going to talk bad about me and that's all right. But let me help you something. You can't go anywhere. You can't go into a Christian bookstore. You can't go into any little knick-knack shop and you don't see little angels. And people got them all over their houses. Give me chapter and verse where you're to worship an angel. Hmm? Can I say, angels were just ministers used of God. Huh? If you got one of them in your house, you need to have a picture of me right next to it. <laughs> we're both about as powerful as, as one as the other. Neither one of us can help you. We're just instruments that God uses. But people got little angels. By the way, since when? Show me chapter and verse where where little angels look like little babies with wings. I read where one of them suckers whipped 100,000 Syrians in one night without even breaking out of sweat. That doesn't sound like a little infant with wings to me. When David saw the one with the sword drawn a fire, David fell on his face. Doesn't sound like a little bitty infant with wings. You're worshiping a demigod. That's man's ideology of what is holy. Hmm? Somebody show me a chapter and verse where we're going to get a harp when we get to heaven. You'll be hard pressed to find a lot of things that people worship in the Bible. Matter of fact, most of it, usually celebrated around holidays, came out of the Catholic Church. And that's the biggest pagan outfit there is. Hmm. A lot of the terminology we use, like holy matrimony. Show me that in the Bible. That's Catholic. You're welcome. I'm just, I'm just telling you, when man becomes the authority, he becomes idolatrous. Hmm. Huh? Every one of you has got that little picture of the Lord's Supper. With Jesus right in the middle? That's pagan. Because the Bible said not to have any graven image of him. Hmm? You that's got a little cross with a, a Jesus hanging on it, that's Catholic. I got news for you. He's not on the cross. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. I mean, I'm just talking biblical to you tonight. I know that's upsetting. Your whole, you're going to have to go home and have a yard sale and get rid of all the junk you got in your house. That does not make you Christian. It makes you pagan. Hmm? Nowhere did he tell us to wear a cross around our neck. That's Catholic. Thank you, I will. You see, you've listened to what man says makes you Christian. You know what the Bible says makes you, makes you Christian? When your life emulates Him. 
when you live soberly, godly, righteously uh, uh, in this present world. Uh, that's what makes you Christian Amen. when you walk by the Bible. Yes. Not when you wear a little gold necklace on your, uh, around your neck or when you have a little fish on your car. Show me chapter and verse for that. You know what Jesus did with fish? He ate them. Hmm. So where do we get all this stuff? Man became the authority. Man became idolatrous. Has all these symbols and all these things. Huh? You still got knuckleheads looking for the Holy Grail. There is no such thing. Huh? They're looking for the cup Jesus drank of at the Last Supper. Well, show me chapter and verse where he actually drank at the Last Supper. He told them he wouldn't drink with them until they, till they were in glory. And if he did drink from a cup, it wasn't gold and silver and ornate and something to be prized. It was probably something hewed out of pottery that got broken shortly thereafter. They're looking for the spear of Ninsines. How they got that name, I don't know. But supposedly the spear that was thrust in his side. Hmm? That thing is, uh, was rusted and decayed uh, uh, about 30 years after the death of Jesus. You're not going to find it. Just like people looking for the Dead Sea Scrolls. You know what you need? The King James Bible is what you need. I'm just telling you, when man becomes the authority... The Bible is put to the side and man dictates what man will do and man will become idolatrous. Hmm. I know that's popular preaching. Hmm. None of that's in my notes. You know what my note says? There's idolatry. That's all my note says. When man becomes the authority, there's imitation. Look again at verse number 5. The Bible says, And the man Micah had an house of gods and made an ephod and a teraphim. Now the ephod was the breastplate that the high priest would put on. And the teraphim was his interpretation of the cherubim. If you're a student of the temple and you're a student of the Bible and you understand the temple and the tabernacle that God gave Moses the law concerning the Ark of the Covenant and on the lid of the Ark of the Covenant there were two cherubim uh, and where their wings met uh, is where the blood was to be applied uh, to the mercy seat uh, that would appease the wrath of God. Well, this fellow's got a teraphim which is to symbolize the cherubim. So he's imitating worship for his day. Isn't it amazing how many places that look like a church? How many places that calls themselves a church? How many uh, 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 places will have a so-called Bible? They'll have a ministry leader. That's what they call them now. Uh, or a senior pastor. That sounds like somebody that's lost his marbles. Uh, they have all kinds of things that represent church. And in order to justify being a church, Brother Brian, they've got to have works. So they're doing things. They're giving water to people on a hot day. They're having food banks right now for people that have lost their jobs. Uh, 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 they're doing all kinds of uh, many marvelous works in the name of Jesus. That does not make you a church in the eyes of Jesus. You see, Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it. And the church of Jesus Christ is commissioned to preach the gospel. It is commissioned to come out from among the world and be separate, to be a peculiar people, a royal priesthood, uh, who is centered around one thing, the teaching and preaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. And could I say, there's imitation. Man has always tried to duplicate the things of God with his own twist. 
He's always tried to improve upon what God said. That's what he does. Why do you think there's uh, always uh, 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 new versions of the Bible? I mean, I, I stopped counting at the NIV. Now there, there's the ESV and the CEV and the BVD and the DVM and who knows what all they got now. Every one of them is saying God's word isn't good enough. We need to improve it, make it easier to understand. I thought man was evolving and man was so brilliant. Why do we need to make it easier to understand? Hmm. But see, man has always, when he's in author the authority of one, tried to imitate the things of God. Do you know why Hitler lost the war? It was not because our good doughboys went over there and, 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 and G.I. Joe went over there and we were superior. He had greater technology, he had greater weaponry, and he had a greater game plan. Now, thank God we had MacArthur and George S. Patton. You say, what were they? They were two tough son of a guns who didn't care for sauerkraut. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. huh? But you know why Hitler lost the war? He was obsessed with religious artifacts because he thought if he could obtain them, he could not be stopped. He became his own authority, and he thought if he could get the Ark of the Covenant, the Spear of the Nenzines, the Holy Grail, and everything else he'd been lied to about, that he'd be invincible. He didn't realize he already had enough in the tank. And in searching for him, he spread his army all over Africa and all over Europe, and all we had to do was cut off his supply lines. Tanks aren't any good when they don't have fuel. Soldiers can't can't fight when they can't stand up because they're starved to death. Hmm? What are you trying to say, preacher? I'm trying to say when people try to imitate the things of God, they become obsessed with becoming God, and then they're shown for what they really are. Idiots. Hmm? God calls them a fool. Can I say man tries to imitate the things of God when he becomes the final authority? I've said this, I make people mad since I already made you some of you mad over your little angels. <laughs> Might as well throw another one out there. You know those little crystals you hang from your, your rear view mirrors? To get the prisms that catch all that? You know, crystals are always used in devil worship. Just, just thought I'd help you with that one too. Uh, but listen, we try to imitate the things of God and, and we try to come up with our own ideologies of what, what God should be and everything. Everybody, everybody over 50, remember the hippie movement? You've seen, you've seen, you've, you've seen documentaries, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, peace and love, Woodstock. Hmm. Uh, all started in San Francisco. That I'll tell you enough right there. Uh, and all them bands out there and all the rock and, and they all got hooked on acid and, and smoking dope and all that stuff and, and all the hippies, they didn't want to work. They just all, you know, were you know, they rebelled against the Vietnam War. Listen, I'm against the Vietnam War too. Why in the world would you send any of our soldier boys anywhere if you don't plan on winning the war? And as heinous as Vietnam was, Afghanistan's become the same thing. It's lasted longer. I mean, if we're going to deploy troops, we ought to have one agenda, win at all cost. Hmm? But the Vietnam War was all a fictitious thing it was all about getting the heat off of the Democratic Party, getting the heat off the Kennedys. That's what it all was about. It was all political, just like Afghanistan's been political. Now listen, 
the hippie movement was all about this free love and everything and you know don't bathe and don't get a job and don't you know just be a deadbeat and don't go to Vietnam go to Canada and all that kind of stuff well one thing happened to the hippies they grew up Brian was a hippie probably he grew up yeah. no he wasn't he's not old enough Uh, remember all the hippie movies, the Easy Rider and all of them? Remember all of them? Don't tell my age. The hippies grew up. The hippies became instruments in society. A lot of them became teachers. They're instructing your children in colleges today. You know what they're telling their children? Don't listen to authority. You're the authority. If you've got to serve a God, you've got a weak mind. Be your own God. Control your own destiny. Hmm? The hippies not only became teachers and became part of corporate, and part of society and free love and everybody is, you know, counts and abort your babies and do all the stuff that they've done. I ain't got time to get in all the movements. Hippies also realized they needed to worship something. But I don't like the Bible. They don't like preaching. They don't like being told what to do. So they came up with their own church. And the hippie church says stuff like, we're not your grandma's church. Come as you are. Fill up your cup at the coffee pot on the way through. We don't sing them songs about the blood. We sing praise and worship songs and we wash windows and we, we act the same way we did at Woodstock. And it's flourished in America because man's become the authority. Hmm? Amen. Well, I'm making you all real happy tonight. How am I doing, Thad? All right, thank you. When man becomes the authority, he becomes iniquitous. There's idolatry, there's imitation. But there's also inclination. Look again at verse 5. Don't worry, Tommy, I'm going to tell you what that word means. And the man Micah had a house of gods and made an ephod and the teraphim, and here it is, and consecrated one of his sons. That word inclination means defilement. It's one thing to imitate the things of God. It's another thing to defile the things of God. Consecration is always something that God does. God's the one that calls a man, and God's the one that consecrates a man, sets a man apart for his service. Now somebody said something about sanctification earlier. Let me just help you with something. You can't sanctify yourself. Sanctification is a work of God. Uh, now, a, a lot of people will preach that you can sanctify yourself by how you wear, what you wear and how you speak and how you walk and how you talk and all that. Uh, uh, that's not sanctification. That's uh, being a Pharisee. Sanctification happens on the inside, and only God can do that. When God sets you apart for His service, uh, 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 the way that God sanctifies you, the more you get into the Bible, the more you pray, the more you desire God, the more God uh, is working in your life, and He's uh, 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 working on those things in your life. Paul said it this way, work out that which God's put in you. Uh, work out your own salvation. Uh, in other words, God has sa uh, saved you, uh, He has sealed you, uh, and the more you desire God, the more He is developing Himself in you. Just let Him out is what it's saying. Hmm? But as far as you doing it, if you're sanctifying yourself, you're in trouble. Because you can't do it. Huh? He does it. The more you let Him out, the more you just yield to Him. He set you apart. Well, this guy here is wanting to do what God's work. The Holy Spirit of God is what calls a man. The Holy Spirit of God is what convic convicts a man. The Holy Spirit of God is what consecrates a man for the service of God. And let me just say this on that hippie movement, by the way. 
God never calls an unqualified man. And just in case you don't know, God never calls a woman to preach. You're welcome. Thought I'd throw that out there. Jackie, I think, has been uh, you know, praying about that. huh? He become iniquitous. And then he become guilty of inquination. He is taking those things that only God does, and he is putting his hands on it. He's guilty of defiling the holy things of God. How many TV preachers have you seen claim to have the power of the Holy Ghost to heal people? Only God can heal somebody. And just let me say this for the umpteenth time. If I had the gift of healing, Clint would be out of job. We wouldn't have no hospitals. I'd just go around healing people. Hmm? Huh? And I wouldn't pay them or make them pay. I've heard folks that went to them big healing services in years gone by. They'd have the $5 line. You didn't get much of a healing there. But if you was willing to pay $150, you got a lot of his attention over there. Huh? True story. Think about it. If I had to give, if you had the gift to heal people, would there be anybody sick? Hmm? I was one time down at Brother Greg's. This is when Brother Charlie is alive. He was with me. We was down there staying. Brother Greg's double wide down there, and we was watching. You know, at that time, Brother Greg's cheap. I mean, he's cheap. He's tight. I hope he's watching. He's tight. He's tight with his money. Back then, you just had rabbit ears on a little TV in there, so you got three channels. And you had to stand on one leg to get the third one. You know what I'm saying? Uh, since then, Sister Joyce has been working on him. Now they've now they got, they got a little satellite on there. So now you get about 18 channels. That's a blessing. But Brother Charlie and I, is there, and they have a local uh, uh, channel with, with churches on it down there. Well, we was watching. We was watching. We heard some good preaching on there. And then we heard some not so good preaching on there. But this one guy come on there, and he called himself the Apostle. And as soon as he said that, I, I had to listen up. I'm thinking, this guy's old if he's an apostle. Because, I mean, to be an apostle, you had to see Jesus in the flesh. So this guy's 2,000 years old, man. I want to see what he looks like. Uh, we've got an apostle here. Hallelujah. What a blessing. Brother Charlie and I, and you got to understand, if you didn't know Brother Charlie, man, what a card he was. Uh, we was having a time listening to the apostle. And the apostle had a little old lady sitting on the front row and said, uh, this lady has the gift of healing. She's never prayed for somebody that didn't get healed. Charlie looked at me and said, well, get her address. I got this heart condition. I need to go look her up. <laughs> we can laugh at that, but there are people who believe that. It's defiling the holy things of God. Just like some of these charismatic churches that have these laughing revivals when they preach on hell and they laugh about it. Hell is no laughing matter, friend. Amen. Just like people that uh, uh, have these dance revivals where they get around the altar and they start doing these dances like you'd expect to see uh, happening over in the jungles of Africa. Uh, there is a spirit behind it, but it is not the Holy Spirit. Uh, they have made themselves the authority and they have defiled the holy things of God uh, and they're making a mockery of the things of God. Uh, that's what happens when man becomes the authority. And I thought about this lastly. When man becomes the authority, it becomes injurious. Look in verse number 5. The Bible says, He consecrated one of his sons who became his priest. Look at the injury that now happens. This man has made himself his own authority, he has a house of demigods that he's worshiping. It's full of idolatry. He's imitating the things of God. He's defiled the things of God by consecrating one of his sons. Uh, and now he's uh, uh, made his son injurious uh, uh, by making his son his own priest. It's bad enough. He did it himself. Now he's passing it on to the next generation. The Bible says this in Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 9. Only take heed to thyself 
and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but teach them to thy sons and thy sons' sons. Somewhere along the line in Micah's family, his father, his grandfather, somebody quit teaching him the ways of God. And now he's made himself the own authority. Instead of teaching his son the ways of God, he's teaching his son his own idolatrous ways. He himself is making his son his own authority. Now why this message, preacher? All around us, there are people who have not been taught the ways of God. Some of them know just enough about the Bible to make themselves dangerous. And they have made themselves their own authority. Why is it so important that we not only beat our chest and say we are essential, that we start living an essential Christian life so they can see who the real authority is? Because one thing they can't do they cannot change their hearts. They cannot change their lives. They cannot become a new creature in Christ Jesus by their own means. They need to see what God can do in a life and how God can change a life who submits their will to the only authority, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. All around us, there are people who have made themselves their own authority. Some of it are doing it in the name of Jesus. We know what Matthew 7 says. Many in that day will come to him and say, Did I not cast out demons? Did I not preach and I prophesy in thy name? Did I not do many marvelous works in thy name? He said, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity, I never knew you. There are people that go to churches who the leader has made himself or herself the authority. There are people in positions that on job sites, people in our school systems, people running the governments who have made themselves the authority. Used to, when people had problems, they'd come to the church house and get somebody to get God on their behalf. Now they don't see the need of that because they themselves are the authority. You and I need to humble ourselves before God and really get serious about revival because if they don't see the fire of God burning in our soul they'll continue down that path and you know where that path ends? Hell. Man did what was right in his own eyes. What is man doing today? What is right in his own eyes? What they need to see is not a bunch of people who are defying the government who don't care about lives, you know, that's what they're saying about us. If you're having church, you, you don't care about safety of people. You're killing people. They've said that. Churches are killing people. The mayor of New York City said if he has his way, he'll close churches permanently. What they need to see is not us but Him, whose we are. And they're not going to see that unless we have revival. Unless when they drive by to thumb their nose at our sign, they sense a presence that they've never known. Unless when our very name is mentioned in their circles, conviction sets in their soul. And friend, that won't happen by anything we do. That'll happen when He goes to work on our behalf the reason we're not in a state of revival is deep down inside we still have a problem giving him the authority I was convinced and correct me if I'm wrong brother Aaron did not last Wednesday night I told you come Sunday morning I didn't even know because we talked about live stream I told you I said I don't even know if we'll get to a message 
Did I not say that I was hoping that God's presence would be so real and there would be such an excitement to come to church, we wouldn't even get to preach it? Did I not tell you that? We come in here Sunday morning and some of you look like deer staring in the headlights. I told Miss Annette, I said, I can tell the ones who when the live stream was on, they treated it as church, and I can tell the ones who didn't. Because when we got to come together as church, there were some who were ready and some who weren't. Hmm? Should have never got to preach Sunday morning. We shouldn't have got out of the first congregational song Sunday morning. For Sunday school, Brother Ray sang that song and he was so bubbling over, excited to be in church. That's the way we all should have been. You know why we weren't? Because deep down inside, we still got an authority problem. Deep down inside, some of you watched the live stream. Some of you watched it with an intent on listening. Some of you listened and you did what you heard. Some of you watched the live stream while you was doing something else and you caught some of it. Some of you listened to it, went in one ear and out the other. Some of you said, oh, tonight was church night. I'll, I'll have to catch it on replay and you never caught it on replay because you're the authority. And some of you, even tonight, came. Each service we've assembled, I've given you opportunity to worship. I've asked if you had anything on your heart. Sunday morning, Sunday night, tonight, in some instances like pulling teeth. You know why? Because deep down inside, some of you are still the authority in your life. Now don't get me wrong. If the Spirit of God didn't tell you to say something, you shouldn't say anything. Right. Spirit of God didn't tell you to sing, you shouldn't sing. Right. But some of you never even considered it because you weren't praying when you came in and you weren't praying why things started. You weren't asking God, God, what would you have me to do? And then there are some, Miss Billy, who the Spirit of God don't tell them, and they do it anyway, because they're the authority. Preached a message one time on liberty is not a license. Just because I asked for a testimony don't mean that it's God's will for you to get one. And when people usurp their authority over the Spirit of God in their life, it grieves the Spirit of God, and He can't do what He wants to do. When man becomes the authority... You may not have a house of God, but when you usurp authority over the, over the Spirit of God in your life, you're just as guilty as that man Micah because you're the authority. You know Jesus is Savior, but He's not your Lord because when He's your Lord, He tells you when to speak and when not to speak. He tells you when to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Tells you when to speak up. Tells you when to sing. Tells you when not to sing. He tells you all those things. But if you're the authority, all you hear is your voice and not his. God help us to not do what's right in our eyes, but to plead like our darling Savior did. Not my will, but thine be done. And until we learn to yield to the Word of God and the Holy Ghost of God will never see revival. Oh, I'd love to see revival. I'd love to have a meeting. But I'm not going to do it because that's what I desire. I'm going to do it because that's what God says to do. And I wonder tonight, who's the authority in your heart? Now some of you right now are trying to think in your head, well, did I do this? Did I do that? Am I doing this? Am I doing that? See, you're being the authority. You know how to find out who's the authority in your life? Ask the Lord, Lord, show me 
is there any wicked way found in me? Because when you ask him, he'll show you. You don't have to question. You ask him, he'll show you. And if he shows you, then get it made right. And ask him to help you every day to crucify yourself and let him be the authority. Let's all stand, Brother Clint. Come. Get a song of invitation. While he's coming, let's pray. Father, we love you. One little simple verse that says so much. And God, if we're honest tonight, there's many times we're the authority. There's many times we conduct ourselves without even asking you your will. There's many times we come to church and we haven't even sought your will. We haven't even asked, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Many times we come and we take for granted we'll have liberty to do something in a service, but we haven't felt led to do something in a service. Many times, Lord, we usurp our, our authority and our ways above your ways. So, Father, we ask that, Lord, you'd wink at our ignorance, you'd forgive us of our sin, forgive us of our iniquitous, idolatrous ways, God, give us a spirit of discernment and help us to be led of the sweet Holy Ghost of God. Help us not to do things for vain glory and help us not to do things to be seen, but God, help us to do things in accordance to the will of God. God, I pray, oh God, I pray, we'd search our, our, the scriptures that you might search our hearts and show us if there be any wicked way in us. God, help us. The Lord, submit to the authority of God every very breath that we take. Then, Lord, we'll see revival. Then we'll see lives change. Then we'll see you glorified in the streets of our dear city. Now, Father, have your will and way in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Help folks do business with God that we might go forth and truly be Christ-like. And we'll thank you for it. For it's in the holy name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.